In this section of the Fast Recovery Series, we will review equipment performance and fundamentals of a full-flow recovery setup. An important part of fast recovery is the ability to trust the accuracy and the performance of your tools and equipment being used during the recovery process. Before performing any type of recovery service, you should always test your tools to ensure they're working properly and have no leaks. Checking your tools can be as simple as visual inspections or more complex specific baseline performance testing to make sure the tool being used is ready for the task at hand. An understanding of how to perform these tests to ensure your tools are working properly is necessary to ensure a safe and fast recovery. Purging the entire recovery setup is essential to any recovery job and applies to all recovery methods. Purging the hoses and recovery machine prevents non-condensables, contaminants, such as moisture and oil from other refrigerants, and air from mixing with the recovered refrigerant. This is especially important when recovering A2L or mildly flammable refrigerants since an air mixture can create an ignitable concentration. It also ensures that any refrigerant being reused or returned for recycling is in its purest state. When setting up for a fast recovery, the goal is to achieve full flow. Before we get into the specific components of a full flow setup, we must first understand the difference between liquid and vapor recovery. Liquid refrigerant can be up to 300 times denser than vapor. Because of this, it's recommended to recover liquid refrigerant whenever possible. A helpful way to understand why moving liquid refrigerant is faster than moving vapor refrigerant due to liquid density can be visualized using two pots. One pot is full of water, while the other is empty, and we must transfer the water from one pot to the other. To transfer the water to the second pot, you have two options. You could simply pour the water directly from one pot into the other, only vaporizing and recondensing any residual water that remains. Alternatively, you could vaporize all of the water and then recondense it into the other pot. The first method is significantly quicker. This is because the bulk of the water is moved in its liquid phase, which requires far less energy than changing its phase. In contrast, the second method is not only time-consuming but also energy-intensive, as it involves waiting for the water to evaporate and then recondensing it, which is a more complex and energy-demanding process. This analogy directly applies to refrigerant recovery since it's more efficient to move refrigerant in its liquid form, similar to pouring water from one pot to another, than to convert it to vapor and back to liquid. However, moving liquid refrigerants can present challenges for some recovery machines. Most recovery machines are unable to recover liquid refrigerant due to the risk of internal component damage. A common workaround that some recovery machine manufacturers incorporate is a throttling knob to control the amount of liquid that is entering the compressor. While throttling refrigerant does help avoid liquid hammering and potential damage, it comes at the cost of restricting the refrigerant flow, ultimately slowing the recovery process. In the 1990s, recovery machine manufacturers started to develop machines with oil-less compressors. These machines don't have an oil sump but still require oil to lubricate rotating components. To get the oil needed for lubrication, some oil-less compressor recovery machines utilize a design known as a refrigerant-flooded crankcase. This design relies on system compressor oil trapped in the recovered refrigerant to enter the crankcase for lubrication. The downside to this design is the potential to flush the compressor bearings of any lubricating oils when pumping virgin refrigerant. This stripping of lubrication can lead to early failure of the bearings and possible cross-contamination. Lastly, recovery machines of this design need a purge function to remove refrigerant trapped inside the flooded crankcase at the end of recovery. This adds an extra step to maintain EPA compliance and avoid cross-contamination. In order to have the fastest recovery times, you need a machine that can handle liquid refrigerants. Using a recovery machine with a permanently lubricated, refrigerant-isolated crankcase, like the G5 Twin, negates the risks associated with pumping liquid. Without the reliance on compressor oil, these recovery machines can pump liquid and virgin refrigerants without issue. Allowing for a full-flow setup, increasing recovery speeds and utility on the job site. Another important element of your refrigerant recovery setup is the filter dryer. Its primary role is to safeguard the recovery machine against debris and contaminants rather than cleaning the refrigerant itself. 
This is especially important while servicing systems that are wet, have undergone a compressor burnout, or are otherwise contaminated. Failing to replace the filter dryer can lead to painfully slow recovery times and refrigerant cross-contamination. Therefore, as a best practice, it is highly recommended always to use a filter dryer and regularly replace the filter dryer between jobs to ensure the longevity and efficient operation of your recovery machine. Also, it's important to ensure refrigerant cannot be trapped by solenoid valves, expansion valves, and branch boxes. These components can be controlled by magnets or onboard system controls to ensure full flow and full refrigerant recovery. Now that you have an understanding of proper equipment performance and basic full flow principles, we can review advanced full flow practices deployed during the recovery process.